is me, terrible. I have returned. I did not make any videos last week simply because I'm tired of my picks being so bad. Alright, I want them to be better. Hopefully they'll be better this week. They're not actually that bad. I'm just very sensitive. But yeah, I took a week off. Back at it for this week. We have a week 8 preview video. I'm adding chapters to the video, so if there's a certain matchup you want to hear about, feel free to skip ahead to it. Um, but if you're along for the full ride, let us begin the first matchup. Vikings versus the Rams. Thursday night prime video. The Thursday night games have been pretty good. This one, it could be alright. Uh, I wish Puka Nakua was back for this one. They say he's going to be back soon. We will see what happens with that. But the Rams, they are coming into this one 5-1. and one. Or sorry, the Vikings are coming into this one 5-1. and one. The Rams are 2-4. and four. Uh, This is a home game for the Rams. It's in SoFi Stadium. And the Vikings have the line at minus 3. So, pretty good, pretty good. Um, for this one, I gotta stick with the team that's been hot. I believe this is a Vikings W. As much as I like the Rams, um, they are just, they are depleted this year. They are very depleted. Um, but they got Kyron Williams, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> but in this one, I must pick the Vikings to get it done on the short week for Thursday Night Football. The next one is Bengals Eagles. No morning games on Sunday. We're starting at 1 o'clock. We are starting at 1 o'clock. This one is in Cincinnati. Got a nice home one for the Bengals. Eagles come into it 4-2. and two. Bengals coming in 3-4. and four. And the line is actually minus two and a half for the Bengals. That is interesting. Uh, they should have most of their studs back. Uh, I guess Dallas Goddard's out. Or he's questionable right now, but they got A.J. Brown back. They got Devontae Smith back. They didn't have the best week last week. Well, A.J. did. A.J. was fine. Um, but they got great, great victory. Uh over the Giants. Always good to win the divisional matchup. And, you know, the Bengals, they, they had a really rough start, but they're starting to really come around. I mean, they got Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. That certainly helps. And I do see them as, you know, a pretty big threat to the Eagles, especially since I don't think the Eagles can defense will do much uh, to stop them. But in this case, I have to go against the spread. I am picking the Eagles to get this victory. Uh, get this a nice wave victory. Um, but would not be surprised if the Bengals completely dominated. <laughs> but yeah, we're going with the Eagles on that one. We'll see what happens. The next 1 o'clock game. Browns. Ravens. Ravens go into it 5-2. and two. Browns are 1-6. and six. They've been awful, but they got a home game it's a divisional rival so they gotta forget about their horrible season and be hopeful for James Winston uh, cause he will be playing in this one no no Watson uh, I guess he should be out for the year right I mean it was the Achilles um, <laughs> um, so he's done and DTR is actually just gonna stay as the backup uh, he was the backup last week for whatever reason but it's gonna be Winston so um, you can count on him for three touchdowns, three picks, um, in the, in this whole matchup, but the line is minus eight for the Ravens. The Ravens are just scary good. Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, absolute beasts. They are absolute beasts, and there's no reason that the Browns should have a shot in this one, so yeah, we are going with the Ravens to get that dub. Next one. Kind of a weak matchup. Uh, Titans versus the Lions. Titans coming in this one, one and five. The Lions are coming in five and one. So you understand what I'm talking about here. 
Uh, it is a home one for Detroit. The line is minus 11. The Titans just traded away DeAndre Hopkins to the Chiefs. So I guess that's good. They got his cap. Uh, they got him off the books. <laughs> uh, I think they did take on part of the salary. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. The Lions are just stacked. This is just not even going to be... This isn't even going to be fun to watch. This is just going to be sad. This will be really sad to watch. Um, this one's a blowout. Uh, just maybe if it was an away game, it would just there'd be a chance, but there's just no chance. There's no way. It's not going to happen. This is going to be a complete domination by golf and the Lions. They're just too good. But the next one we have right here, the Dolphins versus the Cardinals. It's a home game for the Dolphins. They've had problems. They have issues, but Tua is coming back. Let's see, is he still questionable? Or is he playing? Oh, wait, no, he's still on IR until... But he can return on the 27th, so he's... He's, he's coming back. He's going to play in this one um, because... You know, Vegas has this line currently at minus three and a half for the Dolphins, so there's no way it would be that if Tua was not playing. Uh, but the Cardinals are really good. I, I'm surprised by this one. I know it's a home one for the Dolphins, but, you know, hey, they, they got Tyreek, they got Waddle, and they've been completely disappointing this year, so maybe they pick it up in this one, getting their QB back. But the Dolphins have issues. The Dolphins have issues, and... I got the Cardinals in this one. I, I'm confused by the spread. I got the Cardinals getting the double on this one. Kyler Murray, James Conner, Marvin Harrison Jr. have been, they've been good. They've been really good. It's its actually, you know, I didn't expect them to be better than like three and four, but that's kind of where I would expect. But they're good, and they're, they're setting themselves up nicely for the future. Um, even McBride, well, he certainly catches the ball a lot. Wish he would get in the end zone. I have him in, in one league, but... We'll see, but they, they got a good squad. They got a good squad for sure. But I, um, I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just foolish on that one, but the, the Dolphins, they got that minus three and a half line, so that'll be interesting to see. Should be a good game. Um, I, I hope Tua is able to bounce back, but uh, the next one is the Jets versus the Pats right here. <laughs> Jets versus the Pats, yes. It's in Foxborough, minus seven line for the Jets. Uh, Jets come in two and five. Pats come in one and six. You know, it was like a year ago where it seemed like the AFC East was one of the best divisions in football. Just because they had the Bills at the top, the Jets look strong and the Dolphins look strong. And that has certainly changed for this season. Uh, but yeah, that's football. That's good. I'm glad to see the Jets and Dolphins play poorly, but unfortunately the Pats are, are one step below them, so that's that's the type of year it's been, but gotta go with the Jets on this one. First game with Devontae Adams, or no, he already played one. Second game with Devontae Adams. Um, this could be bad. This could be a bloodbath. They already destroyed him the first time. Um, I do not feel good about this one at all. The Pats... You know, all they have going for them is their coach calling their players soft. So, we'll see if it motivates them. Um, I think they'll put up a fight, but this one should go to the Jets. Um, but minus seven line, that's that's pretty interesting. Although, I could see a blowout happening. I, I'm very worried. I am, I'm not feeling good at all about it. Moving on to the Falcons versus the Buccaneers tell me these two teams aren't like the same thing these are they're in the same division they're you know south east you know it's these are the same teams these are the same teams uh they're four and three they both have a have qbs that are hot and cold they have a lot of studs and their defenses are i guess their defenses are okay um but this should be a good one I mean, they, like I said, I feel like these teams are very similar in certain ways. Uh, but Falcons versus Bucks, you could go either way. The line is minus two and a half for the Falcons. And the Buccaneers, you know, they're going to be without Godwin. Ugh, that injury. Oh, 
that ankle. I haven't seen any updates about it, but from the video, I assume it was very bad. It was not good. Um, but I have to go with the line on this one. I, I, I have to say, I think the Falcons will get the W on that one. So we'll see, though. Could go either way. Buccaneers still solid. And Mike Evans went down, too. I don't know if he's going to come back the following week or not. Um, I did not see any updates, so let me know about that one, if any of you know. Um, moving on to Jaguars, Packers. This one's in Jacksonville. Home one for the Jags. They come into this 2-5. and five. The Packers are 5-2. and two. Packers look pretty solid. Even Josh Jacobs is out here catching touchdown passes. After all this time, he just he could not get a receiving touchdown. And now he's done it. He has done it. It's incredible. Good for him. But yeah, add on for the, the Jacksonville, the Jaguars. They're, they're probably happy to be back. They've been in London for two straight weeks. So they got to be happy to be back. Um, but they're going to lose. They're going to lose. The Packers are going to get this one. Jordan Love's good. They have a lot of solid receivers. Uh, defense has been great. Um, they're just, they're good. They are a, they're sneaky right now. I feel like five and two. I feel like they're not talked about enough. Um, maybe they are. I don't know. But yeah, Packers are going to get that one. Up next, another one o'clock game. Lots of one o'clock games. There's no buys this week. Zero buys this week. And right here, the last of the one o'clock games is Colts, Texans. Nice divisional matchup. The Colts are coming into this four and three. Texans are coming in five and two. I assume Richardson's playing. Feels like he's hurt every week, but he should be playing, right? Um, and it's disappointing. Like I feel like the Colts have been a complete disappointment this year, but they're still four and three. So I'd say that's actually a good thing. Um, but they already had the Texans in week one, so they have another rematch, much like the the Jets-Patriots are already playing that second divisional matchup. And, oh man, this is in, this, it's in Houston. The line is minus five. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. I, I just, flat out, the Texans are a better team, but... Uh, I don't know. I want to take the Colts. All right, here we go. Let's go with... You know, maybe I got to look. Let's, the injury report is going to change everything about this. Oh, yeah, Jonathan Taylor might not play. He is questionable. That's not good. Uh, Josh Downs, Pittman, questionable as well. Um, oh, the Texans got some guys out on defense. Will Anderson, he's questionable. Lassiter's questionable. Jimmy Ward, questionable. Um, so that should be interesting coming off that, that loss to the Packers. Um, this is tough. This is tough. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with the Texans here. Um, I'm going to have to go with the Texans. Yep, we're going with the Texans. I feel like looking back, that'll be an easy pick. That should have been made much faster, but yeah. All right, we head into the four o'clock games, and we have, for the first one, at 4.05, Chargers versus the Saints. Saints are coming in two and five. They were two and oh, they lost five straight. They gotta bounce back, but um, I believe Derek Carr is still out, and the Chargers, they come into this at three and three. Um, the line is minus seven to the Chargers. That's pretty steep. Um, Lad McConkie's questionable. Bosa's questionable. Um, is Derek Carr playing in this one? He's questionable. Okay. Uh, Kamara's questionable. Oh boy. And then she heats on IR. So yeah, they are just, they are now depleted after having a, a pretty solid start to the year of just domination, dominating football. Um, they are back to the bottom, and they are also in cap hell. So weird stuff going on there, the Chargers. They have been, you know, playing as we probably would expect, 3-3. Three and three. That's, that's, they're a mid-level team this year. They're rebuilding. They got a new head coach. Um, and that's not surprising at all, but 
I do think they'll get this dub here. I think the Chargers will get that dub over the Saints. Should be a nice win for them at home. Another 4 o'clock game, 4.05. We have Bills, Seahawks. Bills are coming in 5 and 2. Seahawks are 4 and 3. Uh, this is a home one for the Seattle Seahawks. Geno Smith's been playing well. He's not blowing anybody away, but he's playing solid football for the most part. Getting the job done, and they got studs. They got a pretty good defense once again. They just always have a good defense. And they just didn't they just make a trade for the, the Titans guy? Um, not going to be able to give you a name. I am blanking on that one. But yeah, they just, just made a trade for... Guy's been playing pretty well for the Titans on a, on a bad Titans squad, but uh, yeah, they once again just good defense. Um, looks like Kenneth Walker and Metcalf are questionable, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but in terms of predictions, the line is minus three for the Bills. I'm gonna have to go with that. I think they get this dub. I think the Seahawks are good. I think they're looking like a playoff team. But they're not going to take on, they're not going to take down a team like the Bills. Uh, not quite yet. <laughs> so yeah, going to have to go with the Bills on that one. And then up next, 425, we have Broncos, Panthers. This one's in Denver. Panthers come in 1-6. and six. Broncos come in at 4-3 and three after... Horrible first two games. They have completely turned it around. I hate Sean Payton, but he does a pretty good job sometimes. <laughs> uh, the line is minus 10 for the Broncos. Look, Bo Nix has been solid, but that seems wild. That seems pretty wild. I, I think the Panthers will at least be in this one. It is a home one for the Broncos. Um, I will pick the Broncos, but I, I think the Panthers... Well, it's back to Bryce Young, so I don't know what the heck's going to happen here. Because I guess Andy Dalton, he got in a car accident and sprained his thumb. So that's 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 tough. That's tough. So it's going to be Bryce Young playing in this one. Maybe that's why the line is like that. So yeah, we're going to have to go with the Broncos there. 425 Chiefs Raiders. I feel like I've seen this game at 425 a thousand times. They do play twice a year, so yeah. Uh, but... Chiefs coming in this 6-0, and and it feels like their offense hasn't even got going yet, and they just added DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, we'll see if he plays. I think he'll play a little bit. Probably won't be too big of a factor, but the Raiders. Alexander Madison's looked a little better lately, uh, so good for him. They also have Brock Bowers. What a pick that was in this year's draft. Um, but they have a problem with QB. Is Aiden O'Connell playing? I have no clue. Um, is it Minshew? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. I got no clue. Somebody's gonna have to tell me. Either way, it doesn't matter. The Chiefs have Kareem Hunt. They're gonna dominate. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, he has it. played pretty well. He had a good week last week, so. The Chiefs are... The rich get richer, apparently. <laughs> uh, minus nine and a half. Even though it's in Vegas for the Raiders. Gonna have to go with the Chiefs on this one. And the final 4 o'clock game at 4.25, we have the Bears versus the Commanders. I just didn't realize, I, I didn't think the Commanders would be this good this quickly, but Jaden Daniels is for real. No doubt about that. Brian Robinson Jr. has been great. McLaurin's been great. Defense is alright. <laughs> Even after trading away Montez Sweat last year, so they've, they've been solid. The Bears defense... Now has sweat. They have been good. And the offense is now starting to follow suit. I mean, this is... If you're a Commanders or Bears fan, congratulations. Like, this is what you hope for when you have a rebuild going on. I mean, they really just... I mean, they nailed it. They both seem to have their QBs of the future. They got some solid studs around these guys. And Bears have really good defense. Commanders defense, not too bad either. All right? So that's, this one should be exciting. It's, uh, it should be a good game. It's a home one for the Commanders. It's going to be in Maryland. So the spread is minus three 
for the Bears. Uh uh, uh uh, I got the Commanders getting this one. Number two pick versus number one pick. I got the Commanders going to, they're coming in five and two. Bears are four and two. Crazy, crazy how good these teams have been uh, this quickly. Um, but I, I will have the Commanders getting that dub heading into Sunday night. You'd think this one sounds pretty good, but if you if you've been watching this season, this one is not as exciting as it might sound. You know, you got Niners, Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys have been so disappointing. The defense has been awful. The offense hasn't been anything crazy either. I still don't know who their running backs are. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the Cowboys are not playing very well. Uh, they're still at 3-3. Three and three. They had a nice clutch win that one Sunday night, but they have been struggling, and they come in 3-3, three and three. Niners are 3-4, and four, and they have a whole matchup for this one, the line is minus 4 for the Niners, haven't had McCaffrey all year, he might be back soon, um, but Jordan Mason, he's been carrying the load, he's been decent, Brock Purdy has been carrying, although, you know, he has his ups and downs, and Ayuk is now out for the year, so it's just Debo Samuel, it's Kittle, that's it, that's it. Uh, well, Juwan Jennings is pretty good, too, but this should be a good one. Maybe. I, I think the Niners will win this one pretty handily, uh, but that's just my prediction. So, yeah, got the Niners in that one. And heading into Monday night, we have 815 Giants versus the Steelers. So, the Steelers have been solid. They always are. 5-2, and two, pretty good. Um, Justin Fields carried the load. Now Russell's back, and he actually is playing pretty well. He's not too bad out there, so good for him. He's um, he's he's been good, stepping right in and picking up where the Steelers have have left off. And, um, and it's nice to know they do have a decent backup in Fields who can do enough uh, to help them win. So, but the the Giants they come in two and five. They've been a little disappointing, um, but Neighbors has been good. The defense has been not too bad. Um, Daniel Jones has been okay. So we'll see what happens. But I got the Steelers in this one. They got a home game. Minus six line. I'm going to have to agree with that. I think they should win this one pretty handily. So, yes, 